Okay. But you could t t tell me the part about how Free Press finally caught on and, and what, you know, how that whole came about. Well, um, you mean when, okay, that's... You made your first sale to U.S. News and World Report? I think we, our first, is, our, well, for, was for the U.S. News and World Report. Uh, the, uh, uh, the letter was from the U.S. News and World Report. The, re the recipient of the equipment was publisher's prototype, which was a uh, uh, graphics processing uh, facility that U.S. News used. Okay, but for the layperson, let's call it U.S. News. Right. Okay. And then what happened was there was some cover story that uh, either Time or Newsweek got a scoop by borrowing that equipment for getting out the plates for one store, which caused a lot of us to get a lot of sales subsequent to that. You, does that ring a bell to you? I remember you know, Those people happening. cooperated, uh, they were in communication with one another every day. Uh, the guy at US News pushed us in front of time for a long while. I, uh, I don't remember any uh, other triggering activity. It was just uh, slow, slow procurement processes. Well, what I remember you told us yesterday was that U.S. News and World Report was using the system, and Time and Newsweek knew about it, or uh, Newsweek had heard about it, and they. Uh, asked one of the two scoop the other once by borrowing it. Yeah, but that's what I heard. Well, Newsweek, yeah. Newsweek also used the same facility, uh, so they could very well have been the ones who were most aware of it. Uh, in fact, uh, for years it was the same machine who was turning out both Newsweek and U.S. News and World Report, the same physical machine. Uh, so Time, Time Magazine ended up needing uh, a couple in the home office and uh, uh, at least eight printing sites around the world. But eventually, how many of those did we sell, those systems? Uh, well, for magazines in general, we probably have 30, 30 machines. Uh, our RR Donnelly had four of them. That was, uh, that was the FR80, right? No, that would have been the video film. Video, okay. Yeah, the, uh, all the pre press work was done with the video film. There were extensions beyond the typesetter that we bought from RCA. But it, when we got it from RCA, uh, they were able to handle a scanned line drawing with no photograph by any means. Uh, so all of that was done really with Bob Waller's work on the half time. Yeah, I mean, that was a revolutionary thing that we did, which is to be able to produce, you know, when you print in color, it's done by having little dots that vary in size. In other words, uh, newspapers or magazines, when they print in color, they use this thing called halftone, where the dot frequency is constant, but the dot sizes change. And there's an optical way to generate it. Uh, so you can make a plate from a photograph uh, optically. But what Bob Waller figured out in doing it in color, uh, I remember people, when Bob decided he was going to solve that problem so our computer system could generate halftones, I remember some guy telling me, that'll never work. <laughs> because they, they, they saw it as some kind of magic. They would have a kind of screen. It was, they had some way they just made it happen optically when they did printing, where they uh, would separate the image into colors. And then the conventional print. technique at that time was to basically have a grating that was at the right angle, and the uh, grayscale image going across that ended up making dots that were uh, uh, minor, uh, 
black dots of the very size. Uh, so they so they would print the red dots, the blue dots, and the green dots, and you know, and you would see it as an image. And they did the clever things by having the dots at 45 degrees instead of 90 degrees, and little things like that that helped. Uh, and uh, what Bob figured out is how to do, have our machine make that kind of uh, image for the printing breaks, which had to be, you have to print the red, the blue, and the green separately. That's if they were additive. With their, I don't even know what the three colors are. They, what are the three colors in printing? CMYK. Okay. CMYK. Yeah, CMYK. So I have a story problem, and let's see okay. if we can figure out how to, how to solve this. <clears throat> the um, folklore that I heard uh, was that uh, U.S. News and World Report was using the system. And uh, Newsweek had a news scoop uh, that they didn't have time to get onto the front, uh, they didn't have time to switch over in time unless they went to your system. And they were able to, to use the same system that U.S. News and World Report used and, and scoop time so by doing that. That seems like a, it, could, it could have been. Yeah, because they had access to that machine, and they could very well use it. But I, I don't remember this specific. But it's, it's well, what I it's mean, what I remember is there was this one event where one of the two magazines got a cover story out one week, the other didn't, and the resulted in our getting a set of sales. That's what I remember. And to me, it was a <laughs> I thought it was a funny thing. So that's why I remember it. But, but, it's perfectly possible. But um, I wouldn't go into court and be able to give oh, a well, precise definition. I don't think anyone's going to go back and uh, try to scrutinize that. But the reason I, the I, that part of the story is important for me is because Art Dorinsky tells the story about when they're doing Tron and Newsweek and Time both want to put Tron on the cover. And they prepared all the artwork. Art has it all done. It's been shipped to them. And at the last minute, Alexander Haig resigns. And they both switched to Alexander Haig instead of Tron because they have the I system and they could, it could easily switch and do all their printing and not miss their deadline. <laughs> so it comes full circle that where yeah. IIIs uh, superior <coughs> equipment actually prevents I from getting the, both both the cover and of Newsweek in time. And that part is a true story. So it, it, the, by hooking the... I see. Oh, you want to hook those two stories together. Right. Because it, I think they're both true. I think so too. Yeah. So... Because I, I do remember, I don't remember the exact details, but I remember, Al, actually you telling me how, uh, you know, uh, this great thing that happened and now we're going to sell all the weekly magazines, you know, and so on. Something like that. So can you give me the, you know, you recall talking to Al about this and, you know, whether it's all exactly precise, who knows, it's part of the mythology. And I, and I don't remember the date or what the event was. <clears throat> Doesn't doesn't matter, but but we know what the Tron date was because that's the that's the uh, Later. the the punchline of the right. story. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So can, so can you give me something that I can use for the front part? You do you recall a conversation that went something about the newest news and world report? I can Ed, you better tell the story as you remember it. Yeah, I can, yeah. I can do it again. Is that what you want? Yeah. yeah. Is it the same when I thought that? Okay. But give it to me uh, in the, you know, Reader's Digest summary, uh, summarized way. Okay. Okay. We had uh, delivered a system that enabled, uh, you know, the computer to set up um, printing plates that could be used to print magazines, front the cover, and other pages and 
color and so on and so forth. And uh, we were getting started in that field. And uh, we had uh, equipment running. And uh, so what happened is that some news event happened. And what I recall is that it was you know, like either Time or Newsweek, one of the very majors, borrowed or used equipment they didn't normally to ch switch covers at the last moment while their competitor, the other one of the two majors, which was Time and uh, Newsweek, I guess, and uh, the other one missed it because, and the result was that we delivered more, I think, to both of those. You know, basically we had the market because uh, that one event showed the advantage of being able to do things quickly from computer information to printing plates and so on. Is that good enough? But as you look back, uh, U.S. News, that was the first one to buy, had the least urgent requirement. U.S. News was more of an in-depth analysis of the news it wasn't really dealing with headlines. And so the, the first machine was, in effect, underutilized. Uh, and it was Newsweek and Time who uh, were in a fight for readership based on having the latest story. And Newsweek would have had access and, and made use of it as Ed remembers. Well, with that in mind, let me just re-fix this. You know, my dilemma as the director is to try to make the history of computer graphics be the story of computer graphics. So that's why I'm indulging your yeah, you know, yeah. this. But we only remember so much, and we may not remember enough to make Wait. that story exact. But let's try it one more time. This time, uh, give me the just the, the key points uh, in, in whatever way you're comfortable. Because I, I think you can do it a little bit better. That's, that's why I'm asking. Okay. <clears throat> I'll try again. What I recall is that we had delivered one system and uh, it was uh, kind of be, becoming known in the industry that uh, this was possible, but you know, I don't think too many people realized what the utility of it was. Uh, what was possible, of course, is that you generate things on a computer, you get your pictures on a computer, and then you generate the plates that you're gonna use to print those images are done by computer and uh, so on. And one of the beauties of this is that you could transmit the pictures to another such unit electronically over the phone lines in essence, instead of what they used to do, which is they would generate the plates in New York and hire a bunch of private jets to fly them to the printers around the country. Uh, and so, uh, what I recalled is this incident that happened where we had one unit that was in use by U.S. News and World Report, and one of the two magazines, either Time or Newsweek, managed to scoop the others by borrowing the equipment in order to uh, um, get the plates out and be able to uh, even start again. He's just ridiculous. Ah. Let me get this. Um, uh, I could give this to my wife and she can take it. Take it. Okay. Yeah, tell her to. <coughs> if I can interject, I think that's a real key element to the story is the fact that they can decouple where the plates were being produced from where the... Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. very funny. Tell her to call. Don't give it to the wife. wife. Tell my wife. Here, okay. 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 You listen. You listen. Okay, let me start the camera again. Okay. You, you may or may not get what you want out of this. I'll try my best. That's all I can ask for. Okay. So where were we? Let's, 
we, we understand about the plates being delivered by the private jets, so... Okay. Well, if you have the information in computer form, you can send the same information out by phone to one of these devices that we made, and it can remotely generate the image that can make a plate, okay? So that uh, instead of having to fly them out, you could send them over the phone line, which is a lot faster. And so um, that capability of the first system that we delivered to one magazine was used by either Newsweek or Time to scoop the other one and get a cover story that would have been too late for getting distribution uh, distributed by use of our system uh, when, uh, you know, and that, what I remember is that that one event precipitated getting orders from both Time and Newsweek. Is that good? Yeah. That's Seems now you see, I was, I wasn't in the thick of this. You were getting it second hand. Yeah, from Al and from Bob, as this was happening. Bob, Bob, did this fantastic thing, which, which, I knew a lot of people in this industry, and they told me that what Bob wanted to do was not possible. <laughs> Bob did lots of things that were told, supposed to be not possible which was he was going to generate, see, you have a color photo, and what you want to have is some little dots where the size of each dot is related to how bright that color is in the picture. So when you roll ink on it, the bigger dot gets more ink and makes a bigger imprint so it looks brighter. And if the dot is smaller, okay, that's how halftone works. And it sort of works like magic. And you have to stand away from it, otherwise you see all the little dots. Or if you look with a magnifying glass at a picture in a newspaper, it doesn't look right because it's made up of a bunch of dots. When, when you don't use a magnifying glass, you see a picture. Okay. So when it's in color, it was tricky. And the question is, can you figure out how to mimic that process, which sort of happens just due to the optics and physics of it, the way they do the screening process, as they call it. And that's what Bob figured out how to do. Right? Well, that's the naive approach it has to <laughs> Yeah, right. So, so, uh, you know, we could do it, and uh, then once you could get the information digital and generate the halftone, you could, uh, the whole process we had where, see, if, if the images are in a computer, instead of you have a picture, if, if you have a picture in those days and you want to send this high quality picture, to someone far away. The only way to send a high quality picture to someone far away was to fly in an airplane. You could send a low quality one over a, uh, what do you call it? It was kind of scan system. Yeah. They had facsimile system. Facsimile. You could uh, fax, but that was, those were, you know, lousy. So, the thing that stuck in my memory was this sort of wonderful coup that we had developed this. Someone had bought one. It was in use. But, you know, most people didn't care until one company when was able to scoop the other, either Time or Newsweek, one of them scooped the other by making use of our technology in order to distribute the plates. They realized they could do it in time while their competitor, using the old method, had the idea, no, this is too late, doesn't meet our deadlines. So one managed to get 
but this important story on the cover and the other didn't. Okay. So the result was both of them ended up buying yes. systems from us. That was so that was a nice event. Uh, is that, is that better? Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, uh, three more tries and it'll get yeah. perfect tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are gonna tie that back to this Tron thing with art, right? Yeah. Okay. And with you. Good. Okay. Um, I realize that you were kind of watching from the outside and Al was uh, the day to day, but, uh, and he told me a little bit already about this, the crazy uh, movie group. Um, from your perspective, how did you perceive the, the movie group and what were your thoughts as you saw what was going along? Because, I mean, you had to notice what was happening there, because yeah. everybody in the world was noticing. <coughs> well, first of all, <coughs> I'm a kind of futurist. So, um, it was obvious to me that, that uh, you know, there would be feature-length movies that were done, you know, by being synthesized on computers, and that computers would be, that, that, that graphic approach would be making movies and so on and so forth. I mean, that, that was very obvious to me that that would become a major factor. <clears throat> the technology just had to get better and better, and, and the main problem with computers was they had to get cheaper, and they had to get faster, and had to have more memory, and all those things. But we all knew they were that was coming, because computers were on a, like a timetable. We knew that every two years they get twice as good in some sense. Did you know that AAA would be the ones to the one to do it? Well, uh, why not? We were in the lead. We, there was nothing to stop us, <laughs> and we had talented people, and we had uh, ideas and so on. I mean, my I was on the sidelines though, but I happened to when I invented something called the billiard ball model. I was by then a professor at MIT. <clears throat> and uh, I had invented something called uh, 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 conservative logic data. And, uh